What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. It's all good. Just let me know when I'm hot. Oh, great. All right. Well, thank you very much. What a lovely introduction. Thank you, Caleb. But welcome back, everyone, to NECC. My name is Fellow. I'm also joined here by Alice, familiar face from the Valorant Division. But I am not. I'm brand new to Valorant. So I'm hoping I can be a little more welcomed in here by the rest of y'all, be part of the family. But going to be starting up NEC versus Dartmouth and we're going to ascent map number one and NEC on, def on defense first sorry but Alice you know anything about these teams so far? I know they both have a lot to prove New England College is currently sitting at one and four and Dartmouth um, themselves are at zero and four so this is going to be a pretty big match to them for them to kind of distinguish who's going to emerge um, from the top of the bottom of the leaderboard. All right, and I think we're just making sure everyone is uh, completely ready before we start things up. Only going to have to wait a couple more moments, so we're not in that much of a rush, but 
The other maps that we will actually be seeing for this best of three, it's going to be Bind as well. And then the Decider, it's going to be Split. So I'm incredibly anticipating for this. We don't get to see Icebox. I stand with Infernosis that Icebox is a horrendous map. So I'm glad I'm not going to have to commentate over that because that would be terrible to listen to and also view. <laughs> so you guys are in much better hands. And hopefully Alice can uh, carry me on her shoulders throughout these uh, next couple of hours. But hey, you know, it's St. Patty's Day. Hope we all have a fun time regardless. Yeah, fella, you're rocking this too. I'm super excited to see Split as a map choice. We've seen a lot of teams tend to go towards Ascent, Bind, and then Haven. So I'm actually really hoping for a game three. We don't get to see a lot of Split. And when we do, it's always fun to see what teams are going to whip out because we usually see teams drop the Sova in favor of different agents. So I'm, I'm really looking for a map three today. Yeah, Split. You're right about that, Alice. Don't see a lot of Sova. You do see Cypher, though, and I think Intel Gathering is key. So getting to see both of them or one of the other always makes my day. Big Sova main, but Cypher, those cylinder smokes he can utilize quite well to find some cheeky little angles, get some kills. Always fun to see. So I hope that we just see some vibrant lineups that just really bring out the best in these two players. But I think we're still waiting a little while. Almost ready, though. We have all the players in, so it's... It's not going to be that much longer. I swear, guys, I'm not <laughs> debating. We really are going to get ready soon. It's just only a matter of time, I, I promise. Yeah, and it's also important to notice that this is the first week that Astra is available for competitive play. So it'll be really cool to see if any teams are going to be brave and kind of play her in the first week that she's available. But she's a super strong controller agent. And I, I imagine going further into the future, we're going to see her fill in the role of, like, a, of what a lot of omens are doing right now. That's a great point. Glad you made that. That gravitational pull, incredibly annoying during post plants because then it, it basically just forces you to play in the timeout box for a good 10, 15 seconds, give or take. I have to face up against it a lot in just Valorant in general. Super annoying. Her smokes give great cover, similar to Omen. So great point there as well. And also her ultimate, just a gigantic cut in the half of the map most of the time. She's overall a great agent to bring. So I agree completely that she will most likely be brought a lot more furthering on but i don't know if a lot of teams are going to want to dip their toes in that water just yet but hopefully so maybe not this cast but maybe the one afterwards for sure she'll come out eventually yeah we've seen a lot of teams um not even really pick up yoru and to be fair to yoru he is a new champion but he's also a champion that is a much more niche pick than some of these other agents whereas i think astra is going to be seen in a lot of comps obviously i'm this is just a prediction and caster curses are real but i can really picture astra She's going to be so effective for coordinated teams, right? So maybe we'll maybe if she's not played a lot in the Emergence Division, we'll see her more in the Challenger Division. But I think we're ready to go into Champion Select for Ascent. I'm excited to see what these teams have in store for us today. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Got to let wait and see, though, just what they want to pick. So Omen will be brought almost to your... Oh, is, is Jekyll going to actually hard pick it? You did mention he's a little bit of a niche pick. I completely agree, but... He's kind of teetering between that and the Sova, both a Cypher and a Sova. That would be a lot of intel gathering, so it'd be a pretty exciting matchup for the most part. Oh, and we actually do have the Astro lock-in coming from Malice. I'm so excited to see what she has to offer. It's going to be interesting to see if they can actually utilize the Astro utility. One pitfall I can see already for newer teams or less experienced teams picking up this agent is... Once you put down your stars, within two seconds, the enemy teams can see where the lineups are going to go. So we have to really look out to see if Dartmouth is going to be able to utilize Astra and not be too predictable and cause early rotates to happen. Right. I think Rebelde, it's going to be a little bit more effective after that post plants to win in a couple of agents, though, to fully lock in. Phoenix, that's a big fragger roll going into the bill for Kenster and... Also, Dr. Fauci going to confirm as well. So we'll be getting in around number one quite shortly. This is a, a very, um, very wild and robust pick coming out by Dartmouth. A lot of fragging agents. So this could be a very, a very dicey first pistol round. And once that ball gets rolling in either our favor, it could really lead to a lot of crucial round wins heading into that middle and end game part of the entire matchup. Definitely. I really love seeing the New England College choice of going for a double duelist in the Phoenix and the Reyna. Reyna's flashes are so easily complemented by a champion like Phoenix, who has a more of a harder flash that can't be destroyed. So I'm excited to see what they have. It's going to be a maybe a pretty hard defense on the side of New England College, but luckily for them, they are attacking first. So this is really their chance to get the ball rolling and start getting some rounds in. 
No, completely agree, but waiting for the buy phase coming to an end, and oh, that's just such a lovely thing to look at, Malice's ability, starting to use her smoke <laughs> a little bit early on. It It is really just intriguing to look at, very, very pretty. I'm a big fan of the color purple, even though I am rocking almost entirely <laughs> green. It's it's only a facade for today. This is the one time I get to bring up the suit. You got to use it well, you know? <laughs> Definitely. It looks like... Um, it looks like Darth Myth is gonna go for some type of heavy A main push here. All five players actually funneling into A main as the dark cover is coming out. Astra, you can see his counter smoky, but already Ami with the first kill in the Shadow Storm. Massive two first frags, and that's gonna allow the plant to go down in A. The rotation comes into effect, and already a great start for Dartmouth. Amian finding a second there. That's massive for the lone reign of player and it's just up to Malice now and the Cypher player as well. This could already be a huge round win so far. Amian on a tear, trying to find a third, lighting up the Cypher in the process. But Minnesota will take their place. Huge pick comes out by the Sova, and it's just up to Malice now in a 1v4. I think the pistol round's already said and done for Dartmouth, as Malice really can't do much here. They have to find all separate frags here, having to ace and very minimal time as well. Yeah, hopefully Malice decides to at least go for something and try to just get a kill on the board, but it looks like no one's going to find her and she's going to be able to get out alive. Yep, and that'll confirm the round win for Dartmouth. So great start by them. They're going to have a lot of money to work with now. And oh, can we see the cheeky kill come out? <laughs> oh, it almost happened. So close to be it so far away. So a flawless round for Dartmouth. Strong start by them and... You're going to be able to have a lot of money to play with here. You see that Spectre being bought. This this is already a great start by them. I sound like a broken record at this point, but the pistol rounds have a huge part to play in most matchups on, in Valorant. Definitely. When you think about it, two of, so two of the rounds are pistol rounds, but the two rounds that follow after are the convert rounds, right? So those are almost, if you can win both pistols, it's almost four guaranteed rounds. So Dartmouth picking up the first one and going for this full Spectre buy, could be really good for them, but there is a judge in this smoke. I don't think they're gonna clear him, but Minnesota does get the first kill in the Shadow Storm, and Jet Frostwin trades it out. Great oh. shot by Minnesota, but Jet Frostwin will manage to refrag twice. Dr. Vouchy following suit, picking up two massive frags. That's gonna allow the plant to go down, and the tables have in fact turned as now NEC has to retake the site, now playing the attackers once again, essentially, as that spike being confirmed. Hopefully, though. Malice could maybe mark it off of that. They only have the classic pistol to work with. He'll try to find one onto Kinsir, but it's not going to connect. That Spectre will be far more easier to use in those close quarters combat. One on one will pursue, but Angel is not going to win at that fireball, finishing him off in a second round win in a row for Dartmouth. Yeah, really good convert round coming out of the side of Dartmouth. New England College, though, did go with kind of a cheeky strap by putting Jet with the, the Judge, and that was a pretty significant buy, so they're actually not going to be able to buy this round. So New England College is going to be on another kind of half buy, and it's going to match the Dartmouth buy pretty well. But that line attempt from Jet, I kind of like that, buying the Judge, just getting a couple of frags, getting some guns off of the side of Dartmouth, because now they're, one of their players looks like oh, it's only going to have a classic. Not the best spot to be in, that a rock for the Frenzy instead. It's an okay weapon, but compared to SMGs and full rifles, uh, I take my chances more with the actual full <laughs> buys instead, J just to be honest. I mean, anyone can notice that, just common sense. But Soba Drone being deployed, going to gather some great intel. If anyone was actually fully in middle at the current moment, that's not going to be the case. But hey, better safe than sorry. And he could possibly spot out Malice. He'll do just that. So it'll still work, work out quite well for Dartmouth, they could possibly find this opening frag. They're just waiting for the perfect moment, but Dr. Fauci will be the first one to strike. And Malice with a great refrag will finally be shut down by Amy. And now four on three, favoring Dartmouth. They already have a lot of control against their opponents, even more so now as Dr. Fauci finds a second for themselves. That's a huge pick, might I add, as well. And it's only a matter of time before they go for that plant down in B. They basically have full control of that back bomb site. Shadow Storm, the last member left alive on the side of Springfield College. A Phantom Minute Dream. This is winnable, but he's going to get flashed out, and that's going to be another round going to Dartmouth. Huge one as well. 3 0 so far. They seem almost unstoppable. I think we might have to go into some sort of semi buy, maybe full. Nope. It's actually going to be, for the most part, a full buy NEC. They're pretty much fully committing at this point. There is one ghost on the board by Frostwind. It's got a lot of money to play with, but I think we'll opt for the safer choice. But. 
still looking really strong for Dartmouth. They haven't lost a single round yet. They have one ultimate ability to use. That's the revive by Dr. Fauci. Going to be a perfect medic in that position. And that could really <laughs> catch some players off guard on the side of NEC. Dartmouth looking really good here. Taking map control in their first buy round was pretty huge. And now they're going to have a pretty significant economy going forward into this game. And it looks like they're going to go for some type of mid push with uh, Omen lurking in B main. Nothing going on too much just yet, but Amien gonna find the opening frag on the coin, shutting them down. Massive pick, and they're gonna begin to work their way closer in towards the A bomb site. Nothing really much happening on the side of NEC, though. They could possibly try to cut off this rotation going into that A objective, but I believe this plan can be pretty much confirmed as almost every single player on the side of Dartmouth has been confirmed in the point itself, other than Omen, who's still lurking in the back near B lobby. I believe that call to be Sova Arrow coming out, spotting out Shadow Storm, getting lit up in the process, losing all their armor. Nice shot by Frostwind, though, finishing off Amy and Malice following suit. This could possibly be a huge retake but they still have a lot of work to do as especially since it's now evened up as minnesota finds two now a two on three this could still end up being a huge round win for nec if they manage to get that defuse off but as more and more time dwindles down to zero seconds it's all but over dr fauci adding another hammer to the nail in that coffin it's all but over angel picks up one in compensation but i don't think he'll find a second nope that won't be the case or she my mistake Dr. Fauci ending off the round strong. 4-0 for Dartmouth. They're on a tear right now, Alice. Dartmouth is looking really good right now, but it was kind of a misplay by New England College. They only had one defender on this A site, and so they were forced to play a retake, which maybe wouldn't have been that bad, but not only did they lose some crucial gun battles trying to get onto the site, but they also Bruce was flanking on the side of Dartmouth. So Dartmouth had taken full site control of A and still had the flank. And even though Bruce didn't find any kills from the flank, it at least gave them information, right? If the flank's coming yeah. behind the push, they know, oh, hey, they're not rotating through spawn. They're going to be through cat or A main and just a really easy take and post plant on the side of Dartmouth. Speaking of Dartmouth, though, they're going to go for a mostly B side of take, almost fully committing everyone once again. The only player who's not opting to go onto that rush train is going to be the Omen player of Bruce. But speaking of Bruce, he'll find the headshot on a coin. The opening frag again favoring Dartmouth. Another one comes out as well as Amien shuts down Angel Day. A five on two as Kenster's on a tear as well. That's complete site control in the favor of Dartmouth. A masterful take almost immediately. They still have a minute on the clock, but now we're down to about 40 to 30 seconds as that spike will in fact be confirmed. I mean, Dartmouth is playing this almost perfectly every single time, Alice. This is phenomenal to watch. Definitely. Jet and Shadowstorm forced to retake with a, just two specters. Not a whole lot they can do. It looks like they're probably going to play for exit frags, try to get some guns off the side of Dartmouth. But Dartmouth's like, economy is so strong right now, they can afford to chase these specters off of these players. Just going to wait to see that frag come out. Bruce <laughs> cleaning up Shadowstorm only has to find one more, Aww. and he'll do just that. Perfect recoil control and a flawless round to seal the deal for Dartmouth as they take it. 5-0. and oh, They are just, they're on their A game right now, Alice. This is just, it's amazing. Their executes are looking really good. They're also doing a good job and not only taking sight with their two duelists, Amian and Kenstar are playing off each other's flashes pretty perfectly. Not only that, though, Bruce has been lurking through mid or through the other side of the map almost every single round, and that is giving Dartmouth so much information and confidence when they take these sites. And New England College just isn't winning these gun battles. They're not getting information, and they need to change something up if they want to take a round on this defense. Completely agree. They they got to remain on their toes. They got to expect the unexpected, especially when Bruce has just been playing oh. so well. And another player who's been doing fantastically is Amy. And they'll find the opening frag once more. Frostwind will get one with the operator, make things a little bit easier. But oh my God, that firewall <laughs> is just a perfect hindrance for that sight line by Frostwind getting blinded now. He might lose this gunfight and be removed of that operator. And there goes the revive that I mentioned a few rounds prior. Five on four now favoring Dartmouth with the bomb down as more and more time ticks towards zero seconds. This is almost just completely hopeless for NEC as they're just trapped outside of sight. They can't do a thing right now. These post plans from Dartmouth look so good and Jet has the operator still, which is so hard to retake and Minnesota is going to get out coin and Malice does trade it out, but now it's a 3v3 and this could go Springfield's way if they're able to get on the site, but they just get mowed down by Kenstar oh. now it's a 3v1 as Jet just gets out with their off. 
uh, Reyna, Amien, having to sacrifice their own life to make sure that Diffuser does not get taken out of hand. But hey, it's a sixth round win. They've got plenty of manpower to spare. I, I, mean, I really don't know what else to say. Darmouth has just been having phenomenal executes either site it doesn't matter which one they go they just win their gunfights on the beginning and then just convert that manpower into map control and go for the plant it's just it's been spectacular to watch them just perform these executes so well yeah, and Darth is not even getting punished for their lack of a traditional sentinel. Having a sage on a set is kind of a weird choice because your post plant's a little bit weaker without that killjoy. It's a little more difficult to get information, but Springfield College, is they look kind of scared. They're not pushing out anywhere, and they're not getting a lot of control of this map, and Dartmouth is kind of just running all over this game. I would completely agree, and I mean, it makes sense. They are 6-0 and oh right now. They haven't lost a single round, and they might just continue to see that same success. Minnesota, going to go for an aggressive peak. Not going to connect any shots, though, but that's completely fine. Still has a lot of utility to work with. He goes for the wide Ooh. swing, but not going to find a single soul as Coin is there to back up his brethren near Market. That's going to be a huge opening frag for... The defenders but a refrag comes out by bruce and now the plant all of a sudden going down the tables turn by the flip of a dime and now we have nec in a terrible spot against the attacking side <laughs> How did this happen? This post play is so good coming out of Dartmouth and Amian taking out Coin mid updraft. They're gonna make this a 4v3. This is gonna be so difficult for NEC to even get onto the site and Jet still has an operator, so he might have to save it again. I think that's what he's going for. He's playing all the way in the back. Beautiful one tap by Shadow Storm, but it's gonna be a fruitless kill for the most part. Kenster finds the refrag, a two on two. Will pursue Frostman with a beautiful shot. Shadow Storm following suit for a second time in a row now, but there's not enough time for the defuse. And to add insult to injury, Bruce, We'll finish off Shadow Storm, but on the bright side, at least Frostwind kept the operator after all of that havoc. NEC, I liked what they tried to do there in market. They actually set up a crossfire, right? Kind of baiting the Sova in and getting the kill onto Minnesota by having coin play an off angle, but they need to do something different. They're, they're giving up sight almost every single time. I'm not exactly sure if they're just losing the gun battles or they're not utilizing their utility to slow on these pushes, but NEC has had to play retake almost every single round, and that's not something they strive at, especially now with an operator, it's going to become so much more difficult for NEC to stop this really relentless pursuit on the side of Dartmouth. You never want to have the side switched up on you because you're trying to prepare for one defensive kind of hold. And then when that doesn't work out, it's really uh, tough to reconvert that back in your favor. Oh. And Bruce, the opening pick on a coin, that's going to really sting against NEC. And again, they just have full sight control. They could go for a plant almost any second now. I really want to question NEC's reasoning for just allowing them to walk all over them it's really tough to try to figure this one out and dr fauci confirming the plant again i, I don't know what nec can really do here nec is gonna have a really hard time on this retake the leer does come out doesn't quite find anything still four members left alive on the side of nec so it's possible that they win this but it's gonna be really unlikely if they don't start moving soon completely agree it's gonna be a mostly heaven push for what it appears to be but amien is Aww. just putting it down like a hawk eyeing down their prey he'll find two and all but over for the most part i think frostwind for a third time now will most likely have to save their operator as amien finds a third on an absolute heater of a round that's gonna most likely be eight and oh there's nothing frostwind can do but again you can always look on the bright side at least he saves the op and finds a spectacular final frag onto minnesota and oh almost loses it oh, oh, no. oh no oh i shouted so hard my mic cut out but i was just ecstatic that amian found that last kill there goes your operator nec amian 13 and 2 with the highest kill participation on the side of nec is six kills on the side of jet with that operator and now they've lost their operator and Amy is not someone I want to be in a gun battle with right now. They're playing out of their mind. Time and time again, Amian has just been fragging out. I mean, he's on the fragging roll, so it does make a lot of sense. But I mean, hey, I really cannot say the same for NEC. They have not been able to find their footing. Maybe it's just the map of split. As you said, it's not played all that much. Actually, no, this is this is not split. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know the map of split. This is all right, well, my mistake. But still, NEC is a... Uh, 
Not in a great position. I'll simplify things down though, and my dumb play-by-play -play brain can actually understand it. Location being revealed by Amian, but I don't think it really matters. Amian just regardless will frag out and they're already going for a site execute. They're not wasting any time whatsoever, nor fragging potential as Angel gets lit up in the back of the bomb site. And Amian from around the corner picks up two, and Kenster will find his own on the malice. Amian with a third. It's all but over as Frostwind again in that 1vx situation will get finished off a quad for kill for Amy and twice in a row oh my god Reyna is just on a killing spree right now Amy and playing out of his mind right now 17 and 2 and NEC continued to gamble on the wrong sides they had three defenders on A one defender mid and that and Dartmouth they definitely have the read on NEC's defense right now they're just living in their mind and just they're having no problem getting onto site, no problem holding their sights, and this is gonna be a pretty solid attacking side on the side of Dartmouth. I, yeah, I, I oh my, I'm kind of just speechless now. Nine and oh, I've never seen this. I'm horrible at this game, and I have not even been rolled this badly. I'm, I'm a leak. I mean, that's, that's very rude of me to say. I, I do apologize. It's just, I. Dartmouth is just, I don't know, I think they're just simply better at this point. They're going to go in for another aggressive take, utilizing a lot of their own utility to cut off some crucial choke points. Wide Swing comes out by Minnesota. He'll land one onto Malice. Use the Hunter's Fury. It's not going to find anything, though. Shadow Storm and Angel Day managed to hold down the fort quite successfully, and Frostwind picks up one on the Minnesota. All of a sudden, NEC finally comes alive in this two-on-two, -two as Dr. Fauci will get the revive off successfully on to Bruce, but there is still a fighting chance for NEC as now things have been evened up in a two-on-two. -two. Possible for this to be NEC's first round, but Jet is at a significantly lowered HP, almost a one-shot at this point, so Dr. Fauci and Bruce have a good chance of winning this unless he gets oh. out with the headshot as Angel Day steps down. It's now going to be a 2v1, and Jet is at such low HP. He's going to get taken out by Bruce, and NEC's hope at winning their first round is just dashed by that Sage Res. Oh, completely shattered. Oh. Wow. This this might be a flawless first half, Alice. I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer, <laughs> but I mean, Dartmouth has just, they've made little to no mistakes this entire map on Ascent. And hey, I got it right. <laughs> you can't, can't make fun of me anymore. <laughs> but again, Dartmouth, 10 and 0. It's, they're rocking double digits with NEC, not rocking a singular digit at all. I, I can't fathom it right now. It's just incredible. Yeah, NEC is gonna have to do something different in the hopes of getting a round win, but Dr. Fauci gets taken out immediately. The Sova ult comes out the Hunter's Fury, but finds the pick on the Angel Day. Now it's gonna be a 5v3 for NEC, and they're gonna have a really rough time holding this down with only a Guardian and a Marshal. Uh, I, I think it's all over for NEC at this point. Five on three. That pick needs to come out through the middle side. Malice will luckily claim it, but Bruce quick on the refrag on the coin and Amian following up as well with a kill of their own. It's just up to the lone player of Malice all the way in A. I, I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to have what it takes to outwin this gunfight. And nope, that's not going to be the case. Amian padding their stats to their KDR. It's going to be a flawless first half for Dartmouth. And I believe they're two rounds away from just winning it outright on map number one. 11 rounds on this attacking side. If they can convert it to a 12, it is going to be almost impossible for NEC to come back. Right now, it's already incredibly difficult. But if they go 0 and 12, that puts it all in the pistol round. And pistol rounds in Valorant tend to be pretty 50-50. And the way Dartmouth is playing, I have pretty high confidence that Dartmouth is going to be able to take this one out pretty soon. Yeah, they just... Maybe it's the map. Maybe we'll see a little bit more life coming in the side of NEC once we actually head to split and split and not ascent. But for the moment, Dartmouth, they are very much awake right now, winning all 11 rounds that we previously stated beforehand. And we're going to go for a little bit more of a middle take. Now they're actually going to be able to retransition. They could find an opening gunfight towards Coin or the player near actual spawn itself. Stun comes out onto Amian. It'll work just as intended, but he'll find the shot through the smoke grenade. And Minnesota picks up the frag onto Malice. This could all be over in a matter of seconds, Alice. They just got to find three more, make it two more only, as Amian finds the second on the round onto Angel. It's just up to Shadowstorm and the Sova player of Frostwind. And they now 
just can only push in from the site. They have to now play attackers, oh. essentially. And Bruce, the icing on top of the cake with the operator on a Shadow Storm. It's a flawless first half. Dartmouth have been utilizing their utility so well on their attacking side. And now they're on defense, which traditionally the easier side to hold. It's easier to pick up rounds, especially at a lower elo level of play. And spring, spring, uh, sorry, uh, NEC is going to have to is gonna have to win this pistol round and then 12 more rounds after that if they want to even take it to overtime so it's gonna be pretty hard but hopefully they can get at least one round on this attacking side it's a new half hopefully they can just get some life signs out as they're gonna go push into this a main yeah every now and again on rainbow six i'll mention owen sixes and how you have to win six rounds in a row to get to overtime let alone winning I think Valorant might take the cake for having it a little <laughs> bit more difficult in this position. 12 rounds? That's double the amount. That's going to be an incredibly hard hole to dig NEC out of in this position. They're going to start off, though, working their way in towards the A bomb site. But honestly, a firm grip is being held by Dartmouth at the moment. They have a couple playing up above near Heaven and some watching near Garden as well. If they don't find the first opening frag, this could be over, but luckily Frostwind will in fact initiate quite strong, but a clapback will pursue by Dartmouth tenfold as it's just a 2v4, make it a 1v4 and an OV4 as Bruce just finds them all with a 4k to end off the first map. 13 and 0 for Dartmouth. My God, Alice, that was... That was just wow. I, I don't know how to how to put that any better. Just wow. Flawless game coming out of the side of Dartmouth. Twenty two and four was how Amian ended that game. Twenty two and four, and you felt it on that attacking side. Amian and Kenstar just had no problem at all taking the sites. Their post plans were brilliant. And NEC didn't really have an answer for anything Dartmouth had on their attacking side. Yeah, it, it's pretty obvious there. The, the proof is in the pudding. 13 or no, they had nothing to work with. And correct me if I'm wrong, do we go into a short break for Valorant? I, I can't always remember. I, I don't have the best brain. I think we're going to head to a five-minute break. Okay. So our next map is going to be Bind. So hopefully New England College can have some life signs, come back into this game, and you know com compete against Dartmouth and try to make it at least a 1-1 series. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing.
Hey everyone, welcome back to NEC week six. We are currently on game two of New England College versus Dartmouth and fellow last game pretty rough on the side of New England College. Dartmouth getting 13 and 0 against them. So now we're heading into bind. Do you think maybe at New England College this is their map to kind of come back into the series or what are you expecting? I got to see a few rounds first. I don't think I can kind of... Uh... I, I can't make any type of educated guess based off of what we saw last game. I 13 and 0. I it's it might not be unprecedented for some people in here, possibly, but for me, it is. I've never seen that happen. Uh it's it's kind of mind-boggling to an extent, but I don't think we'll have to be waiting that much longer until we actually get into the game of bind, which is played somewhat differently, I have to admit. So maybe that can give NEC a couple of rounds that they crucially need and also deserve in some extent but to be honest i'm not going to fully guess because i i'm not in the position to do that hopefully nec has some life signs coming back hopefully they can get this mental reset going into bind you are totally right bind is a different play style than ascent bind focuses a lot on rotations you don't really have the mid lane like you do in ascent to kind of focus that control on and getting pressure so hopefully new england college has something else to show us on Vine, maybe we'll see the Astro come back again. I don't really think the Astro was the problem that they had, though, last game. Luckily, they are attacking first. So that is definitely a mental reset, considering they only got one round on attack side last game. We haven't really seen what they have to offer on their attacking side in this series so far. Maybe they can put some pressure onto Dartmouth, win a pistol round or two, and get some pressure back into the series. Hopefully. And, you know, attacking, defending, obviously, they're two polar opposites. You know, one goes for the planet, the other one doesn't. Pretty straightforward. And we did only see a singular round come out on the attacking side for NEC. So maybe this will be actually their point of re their redemption arc, I guess you call it that. <laughs> but the only two pistol rounds that we saw, neither one of them were won by NEC. And that's a little worrying because I mentioned it on the first matchup on Ascent. Pistol rounds are so pivotal for the entire game, let alone just the first round. It boosts your economy to such a huge extent, and you can just keep that kind of that snowball effect just going out throughout the entire game. Not only is the economy so important off the pistol round, but even just your mental, you know, getting that round when like feeling you knowing that you can kill the other people on the server is such a huge thing. Just getting a headshot or two early on can really help New England College get back into this Dartmouth though. Amian, 22 and 4 on that Reyna. If he plays it again on Vine, I'm a little worried for New England College. Amian is feeling himself. He's landing his shots and kind of carrying Dartmouth into the series so far. Yeah, I want to know if Dartmouth just kind of hard picks, like just insta locks people and just <laughs> kind of hopes for the best because of how confident and how well they played on the previous matchup. But we're not going to really have to speculate that much longer. We're actually getting into the game. So we'll see that go into effect. And oh boy. Oh boy, I was somewhat right. The Insta-Lock comes out on <laughs> to one player of Shadowstorm, but that's going to be it. The polar opposite, though, does happen so far. Oh yeah, no, I was right. I don't know why I mixed up the two sides. You know, it happens being a horrible commentator. You do tend to make a lot of mistakes, so I get it. I too hard on yourself, but it does look like I think Altoven is now back on the side of Dartmouth instead of Dr. Fauci, who was on the stage last game, so that is interesting to know. And... Ooh, Malice is hovering Astra. I'm excited. I, I really wanted to see how Astra was played on attack. I'm going to be completely real. That's what I was looking forward to coming into this week with Astra available. And they are going to lock it in. So I'm excited to see what she has to offer. We haven't seen really how she wants to utilize her utility on attack side. So Vine is the perfect chance to do it. You also mentioned your I know, not maybe in the cast itself but when you and i are both actually introducing ourselves to one another and it's a little bit of a niche pick that we haven't seen all that much but can still be utilized quite well as a as an important fragger but i don't know still a little bit of a newer agent like you mentioned prior as well it, it it's kind of all down to however well they just simply hit their shots but one thing is for sure frostwind definitely was capable of simply hitting those yeah, Frostwind looking probably like the brightest light on the side of New England College. So now on the Yaru, interesting to see how it's going to work exactly with the Astra. I haven't seen a lot of games when teams actually pick Yoru and Astra together. So it'll be interesting if they're going to be able to bounce off their utility, you know, because that's a lot of fake outs you have at your disposal. The fact that Astra can recall her smokes and Yoru can throw out fake, fake footsteps and TPs, like this could be a pretty interesting attacking side, especially in a map like Bind, where you can really get an advantage by out-rotating and out-thinking your opponents. Speaking of rotations, though, is it just going to be a full A push for the most part? All of NEC is just kind of committing to 
one avenue of approach some stuns come out as well with that eagle not going to find anything though and bruce will give out the call that it's going to for the most part be an a long-sided push they're just going to wait quite or a short my mistake but they're going to be quite patient a little bit of utility being traded out between one another huge grenade on the coin but it's all still a very quiet and calm round for the most part as a slow but steady reposition comes out in towards the hookah angle Really good on Dartmouth to not over-rotate off of that little bit of information they got on A short. Keeping the Killjoy, especially on this B site, means their defense is going to still be pretty solid if NEC is looking to execute on this B hit. It's only a matter of time before the exit comes out, like you just mentioned, Alice. We see a lot of bodies being thrown in the middle of that B bomb site. <laughs> only a matter of time for the kills to come out, and the first one is going to be a turret kill on the Frostwind. One of the best players on the side of NEC now down for the count and the plant has not been confirmed just yet. Mouse will get a huge refrag onto Minnesota, but Amian returning the favor on the jet agent. Really just a matter of seconds for us all comes to a crash. Coin picks up the headshot on the Bruce though. This could allow for a possible plant, but there's still plenty of players on the side of Dartmouth to counteract that. Now in a two on two, the classic shots come out from Kenster trying to deny the spike from being fully committed just yet stun as well being thrown not going to be fruitful but they have carrier up above just waiting now and it's just a 1v1 the phoenix player he has nothing left he can do it's down to two make it one seconds and it's all over kenster with a technical clutch and that round just came falling down essentially there NEC getting stalled out in hookah there. They do lose the bomb there. So even though they got onto site and had the numbers advantage at the end, they didn't have the bomb. So a little bit of a misplay there coming out of NEC. That round could have gone their way. That sky heal was huge in restoring the health bar of Braze there. But, you know, first round again going to Dartmouth. And NEC needs to shake some stuff up if they want to come back into the series. And another pistol round being won by Dartmouth. Three in a row. Quite impressive by them, but I can't really say the same for NEC. That somewhat full buy coming into play now, I suppose, for Garments, if you call it that. It's a full buy pistol round, I suppose. They're opting to run the Spectres, but fantastic shot by Shadowstorm. That's the opening pick on the Bruce. One of the most worrisome players on the side of Garments has even on those huge flanks, but huge picks come out by Amy and, and Frostwind as well. Things evened up, but now the tables have in fact turned. NEC has the man advantage. They're going to begin to work their way in towards the A bomb site for a possible spike plant. It's basically up to Minnesota as Killjoy is nowhere to be found. The flank comes out perfectly, though. Yoru has no clue. A massive 2K. There's no coverage on the plant, and Malice will be shut down. More than enough time for the defuse. What a comeback round by Dartmouth. Now 2-0. Beautifully played there by Minnesota, getting those two frags and saving the round from going in a way that didn't look very good for Dartmouth at the beginning. NEC was able to get some picks, even though they only had pistols up against Dartmouth's full specter buyout. So good on NEC to at least get some of those specters off of the side of Dartmouth, damage their economy a little bit. They're now going to have a pretty matched buy, if not the advantage going to NEC. We'll say NEC is also going to do kind of a specter phantom buy to kind of combat the bonus from coming out of Dartmouth. Yeah, they're not really committing all that much. That Bucky could catch some players off guard. I know that shotguns aren't the most enjoyable thing to play up against, <laughs> especially when you have zero clue about it being on the board. So that could be huge. Recon Bolt being destroyed, though, but it'll still gather a lot of intel before its life comes to an end. So a Storm Bolt comes out to slow down the push, and Coin a little worse for wear now is... They'll be brought down to about 50 HP. The B push is very much aware by the defenders of Dartmouth, and they're holding down the fort quite effectively. They're not really overextending, and they're just, they're waiting for someone to make a slight hiccup on the side of NEC, but that's not going to happen. Angel Day finds the opening frag. Minnesota will trade back in a somewhat wall bang on my side. Must have been a lag interference there, and all Tobin follows suit. The tables it's been turned upside down for a second time. I've said this now, and it's a two on four favoring Dartmouth once again. NEC not really able to get onto the site. They did have Jet Frostwind kind of playing this flank watcher role, but Dartmouth wasn't flanking. They all rotated through CT spawn and not a lot really coming out of the side of NEC. They weren't able to get any pressure on the site and Bruce takes out Malice. It's not gonna be a 4v1. The lone Euro left alive does get the kill onto Altova, making it a 3v1, but the paranoia comes out in Minnesota. Beautiful 3k. Very nice indeed. And three rounds in a row. I hope we don't see history repeat itself, Alice. <laughs> that would uh, 
That would really not make me happy to see that. That'd be such a quick best of three if it does go 13-0 and twice in a row. I, I really hope that doesn't happen. NEC force on a half by again. It looks like they're going to try to get some rifles on the board, some light shields. They're not quite... I'm a little worried about this actually coming out of NEC. NEC is staggering their buys in a way that's not really efficient. Having two players not able to buy next round while the rest of them are going SMGs and frenzies to spend. I think NEC is a little lost here in this map, and now they're going to all rush into a site, but there's three defenders from Dartmouth already holding the site down. Yeah, if you're going to commit to a, a buy, at least have everyone follow up with you. It's not the best idea, but Frostwind will make it work somehow. Finding the opening pick onto the Phoenix player, that's a huge frag off the board for Kenster. Hopefully, though, this Hunter's Fury could find a possible refrag. Oh. He'll light up a couple in the process, but not confirm anyone. But that could be huge for later in the round. Amian proving oh. that point <laughs> to a T on an absolute heater of a round. A 3K for the Jet player, and Al Tobin picks up one onto Angel Death. The clone now being shut down, and Astra simply can't cover the defuse, so it'll be another round win favoring Dartmouth 4-0. This is looking pretty rough for NEC again. They should have an okay buy this round, so maybe a chance for them to get back into this game, but Dartmouth is just looking really strong. They're winning their gun battles, they're setting up their crossfires, and they're trading each other out. I liked what NEC tried to do that round by having Angel Day kind of lurk onto B to prevent the Killjoy from rotating and supporting the A site, but then Angel Day gets picked out, doesn't get anything for the lurk, and just another round when going on the side of Dartmouth. Your trail. Yeah, they've had some great ideas, maybe not the best executions, but that's okay. Your ult does come out along with another one as well, but it's just <laughs> completely shut down. Huge kill by Minnesota, getting a little too greedy, but luckily will not pay the price with his own blood. Raids come out as well, but returning the favor with his own storm arrows, he'll be able to fully backpedal into the B bomb site, finding a massive frag, and <laughs> Altoven picks up one for their own now in a 3v5 already. Dartmouth is uh, looking phenomenal once more. NEC can't really say the same about them as they're all just trying to push in from Garden and it's really not working out for him. Shadowstorm finds one onto Minnesota, but Altoven wraps it up with a quick and successful 3K using her turret as well in coalition. It's a fifth round win now for NEC. They just, again, seem unstoppable. I feel like we're getting a sense of deja vu, Alice. Definitely. Altoven actually coming back into the side of Dartmouth, back onto the team. Eight and two as a Sentinel is already pretty impressive. Five round wins in a row. Dartmouth is looking pretty great here. Honestly, you really only need seven or eight rounds on defense to have a almost guarantee going into your T side that you're going to have a good time. But NECC, or sorry, NEC is really not able to get these executes. They have a couple of rifles again, but Ken Star gets the first pick on the Shadow Storm, and it's already a 4v5, and the ground's just started. Yeah, really don't know oh. how this could get any worse, but Bruce will prove okay. that point perfectly, getting caught on my piece, but Bruce is getting caught onto the player's heads as he picks up two. It's now a two on five, and already this could be a hopeless round. Bruce with a 3k, can he get all four? It'll be denied by Kenster, but does it really matter? It's still a flawless round for Dartmouth as they're just unstoppable. 6-0 oh on this defending side, coming off a 13-0. Oh, any scene, now on a save round again. Need to change something up. They're staying to... The Bruce just throw away his rifle. Oh, oh I just make okay. sure that enemy team can't get it. That's a really smart play by Bruce here, but any scene, on a save... They need to change something up. They maybe need to just slow down the pace just a little bit, catch their breath, maybe try to get a pick, but they keep getting first blooded almost instantly when the round starts, and it makes any executor game plan they have going into this round just way harder every single time. I it don't know. Different. Yeah, I don't know if that was an Astra. It, I don't really know why that smoke didn't work out perfectly, but already three players just gone on the side of NEC. <laughs> Couldn't really discuss much about that. Shadowstorm will pick up one in compensation, but my god, has the damage already been done. And Carrier stuck in the middle of a spawn or a half, whatever you prefer to call it. It can be picked up almost immediately, though, unless Kenster's holding down a deep angle, but that's not going to be the case. A minute on the clock remaining, and Kenster finds a third for himself on the round. It's just up to Malice by themselves on the Astra, and he won't make anything of it. It'll be a freebie for Altoven almost, essentially, and a seventh round win for Dartmouth. 
Finally, NEC is gonna get another gun round in. Maybe a chance to switch some momentum up, try to change something. I wanna see them trying something else. They've been doing mostly just running five people down onto a site, getting picked off and losing. We need to see NEC switching it up. Either have another lurk. I know it didn't work out the last time, but you have to try something else. You're, you're conditioning the defense so perfectly that when you show up at a site, that's where you're hitting. And it lets Dartmouth read them perfectly. Dartmouth doesn't have to risk anything and seven rounds in a row. So looking pretty rough for NEC. Yeah, they seem pretty relaxed, and Amian going for the aggressive peak, asserting their dominance, and even more so now! He finds two, and Kenster will pick up another on an Angel Day. Already a two on five! I We barely even started this eighth round, Alice, and it already is coming to an end. The Phoenix ult, it'll be ended, but it doesn't really do all that much. I, Wow, I'm incredibly speechless right now. As I, this might be coming to an end quite soon, Alice. It's already a two on five, like I previously mentioned. Uh, Amy and with the lure gets a third kill onto Malice. Finally gets taken out by Coin. The Minnesota with the one tap onto Coin. It's now gonna be eight and O. Oh. Fellow, I'm not very wow. confident about this game if you're an NEC fan right now. Man, I have a little bit more hope for him, but. I don't know. I, I don't want to be that negative kind of person, but they haven't won a single round on either of these two maps. And Darmouth, I don't think they're loosening their grip onto NEC's throats anytime soon. They have just seen so dominant every single round and they are just, they're just, they keep adding more pressure to them time and time again. If NEC could get the next four rounds, right? They could come back into this game. It's not impossible, but they need to start now. They need to get this pick here. They need to just peek together. If I'm them, Jet, I want you to check your left and peek together. Oh, oh no. The spray oh. is all tough, but Coin trades it out. So now it's a 4v4, and now they have an advantage going onto this B site. It's evened up a little bit, but that still should have been a kill regardless. That's. That's got to sting so much right now is you don't have the man advantage and you're a little undecisive oh. as to where exactly you want to push and oh no, Amy lurking around the corner, but oh my god, coin! What a shot ending off the jet player. That could give them a little more breathing room to work with, but Kenster, he's playing in the middle of U-Haul right now and has not been spotted out by by that stun grenade, by the bird. This could be a huge pickup for Phoenix. He uses oh. stun at just the wrong time, that was horrible timing. Oh no, Kenster, that's not what you want to have happen. Luckily though, Minnesota and Bruce are there to clean things up a small bit. Now in a two on two, but they still have to go for this defuse. Dartmouth has the operator for this retake. Gonna be kind of difficult for them. Bruce, but Minnesota gets the first kill in the shadow storm. It's now a 2v1, and as I say that, Minnesota with a 3k in the ninth round going to Dartmouth, and that started out so well for NEC, fellow. This is so heartbreaking to watch. Oh. That was their two top fraggers gone out of the equation, and Minnesota was like, all right, hold my beer. I got, I got this, lads. I'll clutch up. And he just finds three. Minnesota. Like, what more could you ask for if you're a Dartmouth fan? But I, I can't say the same for NEC. Time and time again, they're just getting shut out. Yeah, and while it does look like NEC is just having a rough game, kind of off, off their A game today, we have to give some props to Dartmouth. Minnesota, Altovan, and Amy, and all over 10 kills, nine rounds in a row. They have been so consistent between these last two games. Minnesota, especially on a more supportive agent like Sova, being the top frag with six assists, that's pretty impressive. And Dartmouth has to feel really good about themselves coming out of this game. Yeah, who says support players can't frag? Am I right, <laughs> fellas? I mean, y'all been there before, but oh no, Frostwind not checking the immediate showers door. It's it's not going to be a huge blunder, but that could have ended so much worse for either side. Luckily, that's not going to be the case, though. What is going to be the case, however, it's, a, I believe, a completely full push from showers coming into the A bomb site. I have not seen in such a long time, but I know how funnels work from Rainbow Six. They never appear to work, and oh my god, is Bruce proving that so perfectly? He finds two, and again, a five on two. History just seems to be repeating itself today, Alice as this just does not look well for NEC. 2v5 on the side of NEC, the Killjoy on the side of Altoven, gonna have this angle, doesn't get cleared, Altoven gets the headshots, now gonna be a 5v1, but Angel Day gets the kill onto Altoven, 4v1, pretty rough odds for Angel Day, not impossible, might just try to get out with the Spectre, but not a whole lot they can do here. 
small glimmer of hope, but oh, oh Bruce, he's gonna deny that hopeful clutch by so much holding down the pixel with that operator, a 3k for the Omen player and 10 and 0 for Dartmouth. Oh, the bell tolls so much against any seed right now. I think they're gonna reach their demise quite soon, Alice. It's, uh, it's only three rounds away from a possible shutout. Three rounds, they could go 26 and zero today, any seed. I don't care if you win this game, I need you to get around. I need you, if you're yeah. gonna throw five people onto a bomb site, you need to rush them. You need to pressure Dartmouth. Dartmouth, to their credit, they haven't really had to rotate super early or play for this super aggressive map control. So just punish them for it. Get onto this B site, trade out the kills, and at least get the bomb down in easy. I, you can do this. Yeah, don't don't pull a Shanghai Dragons of Season 1 of OWL. That would not be the play. Frostwin, he'll light up the Killjoy from behind. Altoven going to take a formidable amount of damage. Not be confirmed until now, as Shadowstorm utilizes their grenades to finish off that lone Killjoy player. And I believe no one being denied from that ult, I believe, by Killjoy. So that's a benefit as well. Minnesota will pick up one on a mouse. A great headshot, might I add. And a second one comes out as well. Minnesota could possibly deny this plant. Bruce helps from behind with the operator. I believe that's a recon bolt coming out as well. Gathering a lot of intel. That storm bolt being used up as well. And Bruce ending things off strong for Dartmouth for an 11th time in a row as they have plenty of time to defuse. Oh man, NEC, I don't know what to say. And we saw Dartmouth this time actually finally push out of the site. We saw all of the A players were already mostly into mid by the time NEC even got onto the site. So they got pretty stalled out by Altoven there, even though Altoven did get first blooded. But NEC did get the bomb down, some improvement on their attacking side. Maybe their defending side could look a little stronger, but if they could get one round on attack here, it would help them a lot. Just reset some mental, show them that Dartmouth can be killed because right now Dartmouth's looking pretty unstoppable. Coin's got to go for some type of heavy weaponry and oh, he's going to go for the full armor inspector. I mean, very limited on, on his options so it's not the worst decision, but definitely appears to be that Dartmouth is in a much better position to win this. Oh. Frostwind though from behind, perfect utilization of his ultimate, but Bruce perfectly oh. using the operator, a 3k for Bruce! And he could find even more if he positions himself in a much better spot. Oh dear, oh dear, this is not looking good for NEC again, as Bruce is just flaming right now. And Amian from behind waits for the perfect moment to strike on the head of Shadow. It's just a 1v4 now. Malice finds one, but it's going to be an impactless kill as Minnesota cleans him up with a crisp headshot wall bang. 12-0 for a second time in a row, Alice, and we're going back to pistols. Pistols on attacking, a really big misplay coming out of the controller side of NEC there. They didn't actually get the smoke off Heaven, so while Malice did have the Astra ult up, the Operator could still see half the map. Bruce got a 3k from the Operator and wasn't punished, he wasn't smoked out, and you have to wonder if that's just a product of the agent being new, not having a lot of experience on it, but 12-0, and 0, match point. NEC's on defense. It looks like we might be getting a knife fight if these players commit to it. That would, uh, I have we have you ever seen this before, Alice? In any CC, I think last week or the week before there was a knife fight, yeah. So, this is oh. something teams tend to do if there's a 12 and 0 right. kind of a an oh, what's happening? thing, and they're going through the teleport. Oh. Actually, oh, are they gonna all play TP? Oh, no, they I think they are actually. Oh my god, they are. What is going on right now? So many kills coming out left oh. and right. And, oh, no way, any they have a chance, they've done it. They broke the cycle, Alice! They actually won their first round, and it won't be a 26 and 0. Oh my goodness, what a highlight there. NEC, thank you so we much for getting it. that round. You really needed it. Woo! We needed it. Well done. Getting that knife round 12 and 1 on the side of Dartmouth. Still a pretty significant advantage and kind of working out, honestly, to NEC's favor. NEC's gonna have a pretty solid buy round in comparison to Dartmouth. <laughs> Gonna have a pretty rough kind of pistol round going forward, so maybe this is the comeback for NEC. Oh my god, they're fully committing. Four Phantoms and Inspector <laughs> on the board. This is just bombastic. It's only the second round of the second half, but NEC, they're getting right to the point, but Amian is gonna do that a little bit better with the Sheriff hitting those nice little one-taps. A five on four now favoring 
Dartmouth. They begin to work their way in towards the bomb objective room of B. Malice, though, will shut down one of Minnesota. Amian, though, finding two. Kenster following up. This could be the final round so far for NEC, but look on the bright side of things. At least it will not be an... Oh, hold on! I'm not even going to finish my sentence! Frostwind makes it a little bit more winnable. Kenster going for the plant. We still have to see the denial come out by NEC, but they're in a perfect position if they attack together at the exact same time. Kenster's by himself at the current moment. Amian is not really able to help out that much. He's on such little HP. He'll be brought down six feet under. It's a 1v2 now. Kenster picks up one though with the Phantom and he'll find all three for the round. It doesn't matter if the night fight was a win by NEC as it overall will be a 2-0, and oh, narrowly a clean sweep for Dartmouth. One round away from that happening. Dartmouth going 13 and 1, the only round they dropped a knife eye, and the scoreboard pretty much encapsulates how this series went. Beautiful performance from Dartmouth, 14 and 4 on the Sova, 15 and 8. Dartmouth, they were fragging, they were hitting their shots, and NEC just couldn't find a way to get themselves into the game or the series today. I yeah, I, I don't have anything else to add there. I mean, Twitch has seen it with their own two eyes, narrowly missing a 26 and 0. I I don't know. NEC, it just, it, it didn't look like their day, I suppose. But I think it's going to be it for us, isn't it? Because that's just the best of three. So I think we're, I think we're done just like that. Barely an hour. That was, uh, wow, that was faster <laughs> than I anticipated. But hey, it was a great cast for first time on Valor, at least for me. I hope I wasn't that unbearable to, to listen to, hopefully. I, I know it's a little rough for me on Rainbow Six. A lot of people hate me there. But hey, at least I might have found a new home here. But I've been Fellow, also joined by Alice and I think next up it's going to be orbital and infernosis so at least you'll have a, a competent play-by-play -play commentator to work with on that uh, on that note leading forward well you did a great job thanks everyone for watching i hope you guys come back for the next games What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing.
bonus at Thomas because he died. He's gonna upgrade to Vandal, but that's gonna 